blues comes from the heart basically blues is all about talent blues is about simplicity blues is about people who are really grounded there's just three guys or four guys just standing on a stage and just getting out some crazy music any guitar player i'd listen to the tone's got to be there because the tone is is a person's voice i have not heard all the blues uh, i'm not that old yet when i'm playing the blues there are things that come from joy and from pain and if you feel the music and you are in the moment then you're in the blues you know baby king said that when a baby cries the baby's got the blues you know it doesn't mean that the baby's sad but the baby's crying so it's got the blues and the thing is that man i think uh, way which better country to feel the blues in than in india you know i mean you look at it every day what's around you I started playing in 1968 and um like most musicians I knew in the 60s and early 70s um in Bangalore that is we got all our stuff from the radio Voice of America you know they had some really good uh, jazz and blues um, sessions and the BBC World Service we depended a lot on um the hippies who came from the west people shared a lot of their material you know when i had a good album i wanted everyone else to listen to it you know so um we we exchanged a lot of music uh, in amongst ourselves and um they thereby you know had had a good uh, uh, idea about what was going on this ain't chicago up close to mississippi this ain't st louis But we all got the blues. I got the blues. The good old Indian blues. The cops and the robbers, they're all the same. The people in power. They just turn away. I got the blues, the good old Indian blues. in the 70s and 80s i suspect in the early days pre mtv pre radio you know there's a very scarcity of information and music that was being passed into this country and one of the i think early forms that actually came in was actually cinema you know uh, when woodstock was to be shown in india it was i mean it was shown to, i remember in like in bombay many years ago it used to be shown every sunday for many years or a movie like the last waltz used to come and that's when you see all these people perform in those kinds of things so if you see some of those artists and some of the kinds of music genres that these movies brought into the country they are still continue to be relevant and some of the biggest artists even now you know that there are these songs like a band like whatever you know it's not a blues band but you look at the crosby stills and ashton young it's uniquely very they're very popular in india it began in the 70s and 80s in the form of movies the movies had a lot of blues artists in them and then that kind of populated the taste and they in turn spread out and uh, and we of course like good bp guitars anyway so i think that's that's essential my introduction to blues was uh, very very long time ago it's I think early seventies when I was in a drug rehab in in Mississippi. That's where the cotton blues comes from, and, and that's where I was introduced to the blues by the by the people there. And uh, I got the opportunity to see ZZ Top playing in a warehouse at that time. Just a very limited crowd. I saw Albert Collins. I saw BB King when he was a little younger. there was a friend of mine actually who lent me his pool recorder when he was on vacation a guy called prabhakar used to play with the savages 
and he had some great blues on on those pools as well and uh, those taj mahal on that i had some bb king records some ray charles early ray charles country blues uh and then one heard the whole rock you know rock blues things like eric clapton but the point is to go back and listen to the older guys you know listen to bb king listen to albert king Freddie King, they were like the three, I think, stalwarts of the blues sound. Muddy Waters, Albert Collins, and go back even further and listen to Robert Johnson. You know, who was probably the first recorded blues artist. And there's only one CD of his, you know, which is all the songs that he recorded um, on one day. When they say that when he went down to the crossroads and made his tryst with the devil, you know, and uh, and that's uh, you know, it's essential listening. You know, and then if you listen to somebody like Hendrix. Jimi Hendrix is basically a blues guitar player. He took that style and took it two steps higher. You know. For me, all modern music—I mean, not the classical side of it, but at least you know, rock and jazz and you know—I mean, all of that, all of it comes from the blues. You know. We got a Stevie Ray Vaughan CD when we were in the fourth grade, and me and Anik we used to drive back together. I, car would come pick us up, and you know, I'll drop him on the way and go home. So between that short time that we had to listen to music, we'll be each listening to this Stevie Ray Vaughan CD and this Eric Clapton CD, and without knowing it, you know, for a little a little while, we, it was just sink going into us, you know, seeping like you know, young children just like, oh wow, like look at that guitar, man, look at the sound, you know. We used to play with this guy in, in New Zealand called Midge Mars, and it was this really old. Um, He must have been in his 60s. He was a blues artist. He used to live back in Austin um, in the 70s and you know? all. So he was telling me he was having some computer trouble and everything. So I said, "Yeah, I can fix that for you." You know, I'm Indian. <laughs> so <laughs> I went over his place, fixed his computer. So he said, "Okay, just hang on a second." Now. So he goes, "He comes back with a plectrum. So this is for you, like since you fixed my computer." So I was like, "Gee, thanks." You know, <laughs> it's cool. It's like, nah, do you know this guy called Stevie Ray Vaughan? And I'm like, yeah, of course. I mean, who doesn't? He's like, yeah, yeah. He's an old friend of mine from Austin. So the, yeah, this is his guitar pick. So I was like, wow, cool. <laughs> yeah, I've still got it somewhere. Call and response. So the guy will saying that it's my own fault, baby. So it's like two people talking to each other. So the guitar became part of the big part of the sound. You know? I think it will mean something different on every given day. You know, it's it's basically it's honest. It's honesty and it's about expression. And because some days you can feel on top of the world, and you can put that into a blues, and some days you can feel down and out, which most people think is what the essence of the blues is for. But it's not always the case. I mean, it helps when you got something to say. When I have felt sad, and I have sung the blues, I feel like there's slightly a little bit more soul that comes out of me. It's very emotional. It's very expressive. So every time we have to sing something, you know, it has to come from your heart. It doesn't matter whether it's sad or whether it's a happy song, but you've got to feel it. You're born with it. You know, it's dormant, and you have to some some way find it. And I found it through the band, and we all came together. And the first song we ever jammed on was "Outside Women Blues" by Cream. 
that's the moment where I found that yes, I was I think I was born to sing blues and not punk. I've been wasting my time all, all of these years. When we go and we say that we play blues, they're like, but you aren't old enough to play blues. It's not that you have to be old. You just need to be the person to have the knowledge and the feel inside you. My harmonica was, you know, all your Bollywood stuff that all the Indian harmonica players play, you know. And one day I listened to something in a pub called Picos. And I said, what the hell is that sound? Because I love that sound. There was an account executive there sitting there who worked with me, my colleague. He said, dude, that's um, a harmonica, you know. I said, man, that's like, I play the harmonica, but I don't sound anything like that. Those are days when um, we didn't have access to stuff like YouTube and stuff like that. So each, every note, every uh, lick, riff had to be figured out by me because there was nobody else who was doing it, you know. So it was actually just by listening to all the masters that I picked up, uh, I started stealing licks from them, you know and then put it together in my own whole uh, ideas and that's how it started for me. acoustic guitar you don't have much of a choice the guitar will tell you what sound it has and you sort of work around it with the electric blues so i've come to this conclusion that um, you work a sound that you like on your guitar and then you apply it so you know like when, when you actually pl play the blues you kind of like you kind of figure out that that in between point where you can like pick lightly and you know play clean and then you pick hard and You know, just get that biting, snarling sound. And it's, I mean, today I'm playing a 335, play a Strat. It's like, you know, a slightly different sound, but it kind of, you kind of like learn to work with what each guitar has got to offer. You know, like this, this guitar, for example, is like great at like that really warm kind of, you know. <laughs> But you can also like get a nice you know, that kind of thing out of it. And uh, I mean, for me, this, this guitar, you pick it up and it's like, you know, instant Chuck Berry. All that is, is blues for me. The blues, I found very simple music. You know, usually three chords on at 12 bars. So you had to work very hard to get a, a really interesting solo within those three chords. It's a lovely space to be in. You can be alone and doodle and play. You can play with friends. I think also it, that if you know a, a little bit of, of, or you know that format, and it's very easy to get on stage, it's kind of a, you understand the language and the code, so you can, you know, get on stage and play a little bit. When we write songs, and most of our songs are like, uh, uh, 
about a dead dog or about uh, a Kama Sutra or uh, different different things, you know. And these are emotions that we go through in our daily life and that's why we're able to write songs about them. It's all from personal experiences of heartbreak and falling in love and uh, everything. So, for example, one of our songs, it's called Love Struck Blues. That is, uh, that is actually about... Uh, how I fell in love with this guy I met at the office and you know how that whole thing sparked up and so it was about that and then there is another song of ours called Moonless Nights and that is about Sushant falling in love with a girl and then you know he gives her roses and everything and the girl is like I don't want to see your face ever again if you call me I'll call the cops and so he writes this entire song and it's exactly worded the way the incident actually happened. One of our songs that we did with Shankar S. and Loy for a film called Laksh, where we did a little riff, which is, I mean, I'd say, I'd call it essentially a blues riff, you know. <laughs> you know, that is, a, for me, that's, the, that's a blues riff. See, it doesn't form the, uh, follow the blues form, but the influences are there, you know. I've played blues in a village before. They all, they're much more receptive because for them it's just a new thing. So they're all these kids sitting around and, you know, they're not, they're not doing that. <laughs> they're sort of clapping along. They're trying to pick up pots and play along. <laughs> City audiences are, uh, are more clued in now than maybe 10 years before. And I, I think there is a knowledge of, some sort of basic knowledge of what the blues is. So, you know, you go and they'll sort of figure it out. One of my uh, friends uh, went out of town and he bought three hats for us. He said, man, this will suit you guys. So we said, hey, fantastic. And we, was, we were your t-shirt band, you know, your regular t-shirt band with jeans, go up and play it. And um, so we wore our hats and uh, somebody said, hey, that's something different, you know, in Chennai. You got a band with three guys and they're all wearing hats. Then we just got addicted to the whole idea of wearing suits and playing, you know. And I think as from an audience perspective also, they're slightly more interested in the band that's wearing this, or like, you know, it's slightly differently dressed than your regular band. As soon as I told my friends that uh, I was playing blues, some of them actually checked out the songs. Uh, so that makes us feel fantastic because uh, here we are, our friends listening to EDM, progressive house, progressive rock, and uh, we are doing something else, something that we should have done a long time back. It's been a year since Counterculture has been in business. What the imagination always between the team and, and me was that, you know, probably an uh, electronic music, musician would work more or a typical rock would work more. But statistically, blues music packs the house every time. Too. Maybe it's just the karma of love for the blues or whatever. Mahindra & Mahindra is a multinational corporation with businesses all over the world. We are in a unique position to prompt global conversations and culture. And this festival, the Mahindra Blues Festival, is aimed to do exactly that. I think one of the most spontaneous uh, moments of uh, the Mahindra Blues Festival last year was the fact that, uh, you know, a buddy guy suddenly decided that he would want to jam with all the artists who performed and uh, made us reach out to all of them. And, you know, in fact, I remember Shamika was actually on her way to the airport. And we had to turn a car around and say, listen, you have to make this and, you know, it, you know, it'll be a half an hour delay, but we'll manage you, manage to check you in at a little later stage. And they all came together and uh, we had uh, such a magical time on stage where, you know, there was Buddy Guy, Johnny Lang, you know, Shamika Copeland and uh, Matt Schofield coming together and, and doing this uh, Rolling Stone cover, you know, of I Miss You. And it was magical. It was, it was a great way to end the festival. It was the first time we were using the Mevo Studio as a venue. Completely new concept, blues in, in Bandra. It was the first for the for the Mavic Studio family who lives there. The first time we did a sound check over there, and uh, one of the, one of the owners, who's a kind of old man, he he immediately called us up because he he thought the building was shaking and there was an earthquake happening. The choice for Mumbai as a location of this festival is not accidental. Uh, Mumbai signifies the strife and the triumphs that human beings face on a day-to-day -day basis. Blues is about singing your woes and, and celebrating your triumphs. And there's a very, very strong connect between the lives that Mumbai cars lead and the kind of music that the blues genre is. And therefore, the festival is aimed at celebrating the Mumbai spirit. This year, in fact, we have some interesting additions, which is going to be the Blues Lounge, featuring a lot of uh, memorabilia, you know, uh, some very interesting design uh, aspects of uh, blues. And, you know, uh, we've uh, imported these lovely prints, you know, of legendary blues artists, which is going to be displayed. A lot of information on the blues, which is going to be happening. 
So it's uh, it's something which you can go and educate yourself a little bit about the blues. And uh, uh, importantly, we also have a viewing gallery, you know, which is going to be something where you can go and just sit down and watch the whole concert if you don't want to go and stand in the main stages. Key elements that go into organizing a festival of this nature is uh, blood pressure, is uh, a lot of heartache, grey hair, baldness. I just dream of uh, time, some time in the future, to make blues as popular as how heavy metal became in India. Well, I'm so glad, I mean, that uh, we have uh, a selected number of people who appreciate that kind of music even today. I mean, there came a time in my life where when I came back, I just suddenly felt, uh, where's the blues and where's the classic rock gone? You can't find any people playing the guitar like these guys play. I love the blues since the first time I heard it. And uh, I play it even now and I'll probably play it till the day I die. <laughs>